911. What is the location of your emergency? It's Monday, February 24th. There's a crisis at the home of Sarah Boone prompting her to call 911. Is this a police or medical? You know, some time ago, I came across a story, a video of a couple who, after getting drunk, played some silly games and it's resulted in the death of the guy. I, I, I'm not sure if they were married. I think he was just a boyfriend or something like that, but they were living together. So what happened was um, they got drunk one afternoon and they decided uh, to play a few games. So they had an empty suitcase in the living room in the lounge area you know like the type of suitcase that you would travel with as your luggage so i guess they made a bet to see who would fit into the suitcase so i guess the lady went in and she couldn't fit or something like that and then the guy decided to jump into the suitcase and she zipped up the whole thing and she locked it all right so they are now doing this whilst being drunk as well then it came to the point where the guy was like, you know, I can't breathe. Can you open up the suitcase now? And we know this now because she actually recorded this part um, while she was drunk. And then it turns out that the lady had a change of mind. She decided not to open the suitcase. And this you can you could actually see um, on the video, you know, she had recorded this part. You know, the guy was pleading for his life and then all laughter and joy suddenly changed to vengeance tears resentment and the lady started going on and on about the stuff that th this man had done to her in the past i'm not sure if he had domestically <laughs> abused her you know i'm not sure if he raised his hand against her or if it was a situation where he he had uh, another woman you know or something like that or whether he cheated and this and that but it's it's very apparent that um you know they had a very rocky relationship in the past and it turns out that she actually harbored all of these feelings and she was holding grudges and had in fact not forgiven the guy for whatever she had accused him of doing so she put the phone down and she claimed she went upstairs to bed and she passed out due to you know being heavily intoxicated only to wake up a few hours later and discover that the guy had died of suffocation i guess he even you know messed on himself in there you know can you imagine the fear the horror that went through his mind i mean the guy was really cramped that in, in that suitcase you know he could hardly fit in there and she left the whole thing there for hours up until he just suffocated and died so now the point where i'm telling you this story is even though she had said she had forgiven him and everything like that and obviously they were now at a better point or place in the relationship to the fact where they were drinking together in the afternoon playing games right but it turns out that she was in fact still angry with him so much so that she would actually kill him and that's what she did you know but all she needed was an opportunity to actually get that right so in this case what was her opportunity it was the drunkenness of the guy to be foolish enough to play such games and go into the suitcase and so forth all right so can we say that due to the lack of his sober mind it's resulted in his death so the presence of his sober mind was not there because he was drinking now it brings me to the whole idea of hell and so forth i believe hell is not uh, what some people think it is you know i'm sure you've heard stories seen some testimonies including the bible um <clears throat> You know, it describes hell as uh, being a place of gnashing of teeth and fire and so forth. I believe what the Bible is trying to say is just trying to depict a picture of people being in anguish, pain and suffering. And those are the best words that you could use to describe a place like that, you know, almost like metaphors. I don't think it's actual fire, you know, and God is like turning up the temperatures to punish us for eternity and so forth and so forth, you know, because so many people say, how could such a loving God be capable of doing that to creatures that he created, like us human beings, you know? Simply for not maybe wanting to be Christian, not to believe in him, or maybe for someone who had sinned and made a mistake in life, and then you died in your deathbed without repentance or something like that. And, and shouldn't it be reserved for, you know, people like Hitler and, you know, the dictators and so forth? Well, first of all, the Bible does say that hell was created for Lucifer and his angels. So we can put that idea to rest that God is 
out there creating places like hell trying to punish us for eternity <clears throat> but secondly i believe god everything about god only brings life he he is in fact not able to kill anything i do believe that it only brings life in fact many of the times when things go wrong and so forth i believe it's just the lack of god the absence of god this is why jesus referred to himself as the light or the salt the only way to get rid of darkness to combat darkness like in a room for example is for you to walk into the room flip the light switch on and all darkness will cease to be there and there is no way that you could have darkness overcome light like come with some type of dark light or black light you know what i mean just by saying light in fact itself is oxymoron you know dark light you know the, like the minute you use light it's light so anyways unless i digress hell in my opinion is just the absence of god now the same way this uh, lady killed her husband you know but she had always been wanting to do that but she was waiting for an opportunity i believe it's the same way with lucifer and his demons these angels uh evil spirits whatever you'd like to call them the i mean i believe they would love more than anything to come to the surface of the earth right now and destroy us more than they have been already like physically impale us and you know and everything else like that but the only thing that stands in that way is god is the presence of god the trees have life in them the grass have life in them you know nature animals everything that you see even on this corrupt earth the, the only reason it has not yet gone all the way to hell is because there's still the presence of god all of these things that give life all of these things that have life have god in them and this i truly believe is what holds satan at bay in some point because it means now there's still some rules some things to be done you can't just appear anyhow and kill you you know this is why in prison like in penitentiaries the worst punishment if you've ever been to prison or spoken to someone who's been there they'll tell you more than being in general population with rapists and murderers and people who actually who actually might hurt you at any time the worst punishment there even the guards know it is to put you into solitary confinement because you lose your mind why because you can't speak to other rapists and murderers i don't think it's really about talking to other people and interacting although it has something to do with that is because in a way they cut you from a lot of the things that have the presence of god from nature from trees from from hearing people speak for from hearing birds chirp from seeing the sun you know they cut you from the presence of god from things that give life from god and now if this is still on earth and it's just in solitary confinement can you imagine what hell actually is like being in a different realm altogether and then not having god there in hell his presence there's nothing to keep these demons and so forth to hold them back <clears throat> from torturing you physically because right now evil spirits can still torment people mentally you know you get your evil thoughts suicidal thoughts you know that nudge that urge to do something bad and so forth but i can only imagine in those realms or in those times they will do that both mentally and now physically as well that's why you hear testimonies of people who had uh, ndes near-death experiences or dreams about being to hell and they speak about you know demons uh digging their clothes into their chest and ripping them apart and so forth because there is no god you being in hell is like basically god blocking you you know those who have been through divorces will understand this or any breakup this analogy very well you know your husband your wife your fiance boyfriend girlfriend even you know say you hurt this person over and over over and over and they one day decide to break up with you and they ghost you right they block you on all social media outlets and so forth you know the kind of anguish pain desperation anger you feel at the same time you know you want to beg them but you can't because they're not there so what do you do you end up cursing them and then you feel bad and then you take back your words and those thoughts aren't those the same things that these people who've had these experiences say about people who are in this so-called hell cursing god crying then begging for forgiveness you know it's a mixture of emotions and i believe this comes after time and time of you rejecting him in many possible ways i don't think it just got anything to do with 
you know someone trying to preach the word of god to you and you tell them to take a hike and then that's it one day years later you die and go to hell i believe god tries to reach out to us on many occasions and yes we are only human life is hard it's complicated we will reject him knowingly or unknowingly in many ways but there comes a time like when you know you know you know what i mean like certain decisions you make certain things you do you know i myself i'm going through that as well at the moment i know like you know there are certain things i'd have to stop doing certain behaviors and um yeah but anyway that's just my analogy of what hell is and what hell is really like